Hello, it's Sunday. Time for a bit of a chat. Um, I've got no um, homebrew on at the minute, so I'm having one of these. And it's as far as New England IPAs go, it's nothing. It's nothing like um, as far as say a New England style pale ale. It's not too bad. Um, I found an old glass, my old whole garden glass. It's faded dramatically. Found this the other day. Um, at the back of the cupboard in the house, a glass cupboard, and I hadn't seen it for a while, so I thought I'd use it. Cheers! What's been happening? Um, well, I did a brew, and did a brew on Friday. I did the um, what would be the raspberry wheat beer. Oh, that's it does smell nice. This it's 5.2 percent. From 71 Brewing Company, they're a Scottish brew company. I'm not sure if they're ah, Dundee. Dundee. I was going to say they're either Edinburgh or Dundee. Couldn't remember which. Uh, Dundee. Um, yes, yeah, so I did what was going to be the raspberry wheat beer. So I called it uh, the kind you find in a secondhand store because it's a raspberry wheat beer. Um, yeah, and then I decided to change it. I was I was gonna get some well we went brambling this morning and it was a real poor show got sod all high as you probably all call them down south blackberries we call them brambles we go brambling for brambles um, we go rambling and brambling so and I'm starting to ramble myself here so we went brambling and it was a poor show rained off and we came back and I'm like mm. I thought we could have used, I'd had the plan to use brambles instead of raspberries and then that failed so I went into the Lidl to get some frozen fruits that I was going to use, going to put them in the blender, whiz them up, put them in the puree kind of thing and I'm there and I'm umming and arming because I saw they have mango pieces so I went with mango pieces so I'm going to do a mango wheat beer I know Matt Calaby did it this year he normally does an apricot wheat and he went for a mango wheat and a few other people did it and he'd sent it to a few people and they all seem to love it so I do like a mango beer as a few of you may know my uh, one of my favorite recipes is the mango lassi IPA I did a number of years ago I've done it on and off ever since people always that I know always go oh have you got that mango lassi on um, Anyway, so I'm doing a mango wheat beer because I do like the mango beers. And so that's in preparation at the minute. Um, I haven't got the fruit in. I only brewed it Friday. It came out what spot on 1.049 was the target. And it came out 1.049. Um, I got 21 litres. And it, it's supposed to say 23. I was supposed to get 23 litre batch, but I never do. It's always 21 litres. So I'm happy with that. I know 21 litres. There'll be some absorption and I'll get at least 19 litres in the keg without too much wastage. Um, yeah, that's that really on the brewing front. Oh, I had to clean up and uh, I tidy up in here, got rid of a few things, got rid of some um, demijohns. I had like six demijohns and I haven't used a demijohn in about a year or so. Um, but I've kept three. I mean, if you can see behind me up there, I've got the my three demijohns I've kept. Had a bit of a tidy around, just a load of stuff out. Uh, I got rid of my um, bottle dryer, you know, the, the one where you, it's like the bottle tree thing that you put your bottles around and dry them. I, I, I'd never used it. I hadn't used it in years. Um, so I got rid of that. I gave that to my mate Mike. Uh, he didn't want the Demi Johns. Apparently, he had 20 odd Demi Johns anyway. So and I went to some woman and I got rid of my um, well I haven't yet got rid of but I am getting rid of my, my old pressure barrel because that I haven't used in years I keep meaning to do like a connect it up maybe connect it up to the hand pull but I don't think that'll work out probably best just to do it with the keg um, so that's going to the tip because no one else seems to want it so I'll just get that to the tip which is a shame um, but yes I had a bit of a clean out I don't know if you can see over here just to my shoulder there, sort of there. 
uh, a load of barbecue books appeared. Yeah, I decided I was having trouble with where to have all my recipe books these days and the barbecue ones I thought are better off just there. Because I'm outside, I have my um, meat probe just up there as well. Um, just over here in a drawer is my blowtorch. It's just one of those food blow torches I use for lighting barbecue. So I've got some bits here so that I'll have the recipe books here. I can, oh, me, excuse me, sit down in here, work out some recipes, etc. So yeah, I had a bit of a clean up. Oh, we have seagulls above. I'll just be back in a second once I've got rid of that little bastard. All right, so you've seen that off. Oh. See, we have, uh, I think the cat's outside. Because they make a mess all over normally and it takes ages to clean up and I don't like that. So I feed them outside but the seagulls start to come and we're looking so just saw that one off. Um, what else have we got? Oh yes! Mr Peter Hodge, um, he was out the other day I believe and he had some beer snacks. I was like, ooh what are they? They look interesting. Look at these! Peanut butter pretzels! Oh, man they're amazing! Um, Valencia peanut butter filled pretzel nuggets. This is 1.56 kilos. And if you can see the top of there, there's a, there's a bit of a gap. That was mostly last night. Uh, I'd had a few the day before, but not many. But last night I, I, I did snack. They are very Moorish. Um, apparently go really well with a port or a stout. I didn't have that. I, I was on um, the, the shipyard and that was improving the flavour of the shipyard, I'll tell you that much. Um, yeah, it went all right with that. But yeah, with the Potter Stout apparently, I'm gonna have to test that. Um, brew a, brew a, I'm gonna have to brew a stout next. I think I've got everything I need for a stout. Um, and I put a stout on, a stout on Hample. Oh, that must be fantastic, yeah. Hey, hey. Ooh, yes, I think I'm gonna have to go a stout on Hample. And these peanut butter pretzels. If you, if you get the chance, try some. You maybe don't want to get the 1.56 kilos, but it's good value. I think I paid um, about 11.99 for that, or 12 quid, 50 or something like that for it. I got mine off eBay. You can get them off Amazon as well, or Costco. I think they were 7.99 in Costco. So obviously, if, if you got the Costco membership, I haven't. I maybe should, because while they're saying that, it's, it's a fair distance for us to go to get to a Costco. Um, 50 or 60 miles or something ridiculous. So you just to go to a Costco, just to buy a load of meat, cheaper than I would at home. But you'd have to then buy lots and lots and have a big freezer for it. Anyway, I didn't. Um, so yeah, that's that idea. Yeah, they've been a revelation. I know... Um, other than myself, um, hapless ginger, he had some last night with a bottle of Shiraz and he just troughed it, what he had, he just troughed in about five minutes I think, um, yeah, definitely a new beer snack to try, to get the chance, I think Dickie's getting some now as well. <laughs> There's a few of us just going, ooh, ooh, they sound nice, and then tying them and they are, oh, they are nice. In fact, I'm a bit peckish now, I might have some, I'm going to see what's going to go with, with this, like, New England IPA. So the, the little pretzel parcels, the salt crystals on there. Um, you can see that, a little bit of peanut butter inside. Mm. Very peanut butter is quite sticky. Like where the pretzel itself is really quite salty, really quite dry, salty, which makes you want a drink. And the peanut butter really sticks up your mouth. Really quite crisp, and then with that. Oh, like peanut butter mush it's just sort of spreads all over your mouth maybe it doesn't go as well with that that's for sure fruit beer 
because it's too smooth that I think maybe a more something to do with higher bitterness works for me. Definitely, I think a porter or stout, as Peter says, would be fantastic. We don't know, Peter. Bowtie Brewery, Brewery, um, Watford Junction is his YouTube channel. Check him out. The man's gone now uh, from just brewing for himself, but now he's started to brew as professionally as well. He has been doing it for years or two now, but he's getting a bit bigger and a little bit bigger and doing a little bit more. And I think he's got. Um, and he's put a cask on tap at his local bottle shop now. I think he did that yesterday. So, well done, Peter. Good luck. Yeah. Sorry about it. It's just me eating snacks at the minute and drinking beer, isn't it? Not really. Alright, so if you get fancy something, uh, so what does it say? A salted baked wheat snack filled with peanut butter. Oh, uh, enriched wheat flour. Yeah. Very good. They're very, very good. They're uh, very snackable. I could sit now and just chop a load more, but I probably shouldn't. Um, anything else to talk about? Um, oh, the fantasy football. What a farce I'm having on that. <laughs> I think I had, uh, I had Tangangan yesterday. Um, got me got a red card, got sent off. Yay. Um, I didn't bother with Ronaldo. I'm like, oh, it's Ronaldo. He, he might... Do something he might not, he might come on, uh, makes his debut scores too. But his eldest son had him as captain, so got double points. So he's on like got 20 odd points just for that. I'm like, oh, um, I had the oh, I can't remember his name now. The fellow who was scoring goals from before, he's not doing it as much now, obviously. Um, he got one yesterday, but I can't remember his bloody name anyway. I had him as vice captain. I've got Salah is captain today. I'm hoping he should pull something up. So that was good news. The Brazilians are allowed to play. Um, it did seem a ridiculous thing that the Brazilian FA had asked FIFA to sanction them and ban them for playing five games for the league clubs because they weren't released to go play for the national size. Well, they were in a red banded country. They weren't allowed to go. And had they gone, they'd then have to sit in a hotel for 10 days and miss uh, maybe three league games. It was a ridiculous situation to be put in. And it didn't help with the fact that the ones that did play, the um, officials had to stop the game and take off some of the Argentinian players because they hadn't um, been in isolation for so many days once they'd arrived. It's a whole bit of... The internationals are a bit of a farce at the minute for the sake of... Whatever, I don't know. Um, it just seem ridiculous in this uh, pandemic situation. I mean, this how is the pandemic going? Well, it's not going so well. <coughs> I mean, for us in this country, I don't think. Oh, you know, I'm double jabbed. I know um, people. A lot of people are double jabbed now, and I know a lot of people have been getting it. I'm getting pretty ill. Not as ill as they would do if they hadn't been jabbed. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying don't get jabbed. I'm just saying that it's nowhere near as um, safe and as, um, I don't know, we're all pretty much living back to normal and it's not normal still, it really isn't, people are getting quite ill, um, I don't know about the in-laws really, as no they did, uh, there's a couple of people um, t down the road from me, they've had uh, some daughter and no this was it the the son and the wife had it the daughter and my man didn't have it or certainly hadn't tested positive so they're isolating and the other two are carrying on it's just i don't understand it anymore really it's all got a bit too confusing hasn't it well i suppose that's life isn't it it's all a bit fucking confusing and but I did learn one thing today, this week, um, uh, Dean Colburn, you might know Dino, Dino's Brews, uh, from New Zealand, lovely guy, and he, on his Facebook, posted a, a meme, and it was, this guy saying to another guy, how is it you say cool and relax all the time, and you don't seem to get aggressive, he's like, ah, well, whenever people are being stupid and putting crap, 
I just say, yeah, you're right, and walk away from it. Yeah, guy's like, well, that's a ridiculous situation. That's pathetic. Why would you do that? And the other guy was like, yeah, you're right. <laughs> so that's going to be my attitude from now on. Just, just face it all with, yeah, you're right, walk away from it. Just ignore it. Um, yeah, I think we're done, really, aren't we? Walking. Oh, I haven't talked about walking for a bit, have I? Because I haven't done any. I really haven't. And kids are back at school now, which <laughs> that went well. Um, the eldest is in college, um, sixth form college now, and he's trying to do. This week he was doing maths, further maths, um, economics, and physics for his A levels. So there's four A levels he's trying to do. Um, by Friday, <laughs> he was dead on his feet. Um, literally, just like pod. He went. Normally he's like he wants to stay up to like 2 a.m. on the Xbox and that. Um, he was asleep before me on Friday night, and I usually go to bed early. Um, yeah, he was flat out to the point where we just hear him. I, I thought someone was strangling someone. It was him snoring. Um, youngest he, again, just the same. Just knocked him for six. Just that whole back because he's now gone from reception level into proper first year one um so it's a bit more intense proper working and stuff so I, he, he was not for six this week as well um yeah so that anyway that so they're back to whatever i think the thing that kills my eldest is he has to get about half six in the morning to get his bus uh his bus he has to leave here for about half about 25 to 8 ish half seven twenty-five to 8 to go get his bus um, to take him to college because his college is 20 odd miles away um, yeah so, uh, half six in the morning this is a guy who never saw past well never saw before 10 11 o'clock all summer even when he was supposed to be working I, I said when he was supposed to be working he was in pot wash so he was only working evenings anyway so he never really saw much of the day and hasn't done for a while so that's killed him a lot that really knocked him for six Well, that was uh, an all right beer. Oh, I've still got a bit left. They're all right, these. I mean, it's what, one, I think they're 180-ish. They're not, you're not going to go, oh, that's a New England IPA. 5.2% as well. I would have called that a New England pale ale, personally. I really would. I mean, I know marketing and all that bullshit. Next, it was, I'm surprised it didn't say craft beer on it. It's that bullshit argument. Um... It's just marketing bullshit, isn't it? But it's not bad. I mean, it, it's not... I don't even know if it's a New England pale ale. It's just, I'd just call it a pale ale, personally. Probably. New England style. Yeah, you just think that, you know. It's quite... It's got a bit of bitterness to it and a bite to it. What would you say? Not, not a double IPA. <laughs> What's the other bullshit they use? Um, a session double IPA. How's that? <laughs> well, it's, yeah. Mm. Oh, another point. Wylam. Um, the Wylam, which was the northern meat for the brew tubers. I didn't realise it was on this year again. And that uh, I'm going. And I said I didn't know I was going. I didn't have the tickets. Um... Normally, myself and my brother-in-law, we alternate who buys the tickets. Um, I hadn't realised he bought them last year with the plan to go during the pandemic. Um, he must have bought them early on in when they came available. Uh, probably the end of 2019, beginning of 2020, I think that's when he bought them. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Because it was like, it, we take turns in who buys the tickets, and it was his turn, so he bought them. And I hadn't realised he had. He hadn't realised it, but I was um, up in Morpeth yesterday to visit my sister and my brother-in-law and the family, the kids. Um, and we were just chatting over the barbecue, like, oh, yeah, but how's it going now, blah, blah. Watch them burgers, yeah, you know, <laughs> that kind of crap. Um, and he just said, are you coming to Wylam? I was like, I didn't even know it was on. Have we got tickets? Did, I didn't get tickets. He's like, well, it was my turn. I think I did. 
did you? Well, I haven't got any messages from you. I, I, I went scrolling back through with that. I'm like, I've got nothing from you saying I've got the tickets, etc. Anyway, so I, he had a look on his phone at um, purchases from. He's like, yeah, we've got two tickets. I'm like, wow, we're going. So if anyone is going, it's the Saturday day session, which is what we normally do. Um, as far as I know, the people that aren't going, <laughs> um, there'll be normally the girl that aren't going will be Matt Callaby and Rusty, um, Russell. Um, those two aren't going that I know of. I don't know about Big Banana. I, I assume not because I've not heard otherwise. Um, Robbie Williams, don't know. He may go. He usually goes. He, he's usually first in the bloody door because <laughs> uh, it's round his way really so I don't know if he's going or not um, who else does normally go I oh, I feel silly uh, well Chris Aston used to go but obviously he's stopped the whole brewing um, and everything so I don't think he'll be going at, at all which is a shame because I miss homebrew Chris um, yeah, so it's, I think it's just going to be me and my brother-in-law, and possibly my wife's cousin. I bumped in, into him last time, he, he started to go, although he's now got two children. Um, he might not, so it may just be me and the brother-in-law. So if any of you tubers fancy it, I'll be at the Wylam, it's the 23rd of October, and it's the which is the Saturday and it's the day session. Uh, I'll be there. Come and say hello. Um, I'll probably know you anyway through YouTube and Brewtube and Facebook and all that. So let's have a party. I think we're at 22 minutes. I have to go and mess about with another one at the minute. So I've got a pork joint on, pork shoulder joint on. So I'll call that it. Um, and the beer's gone and um, my pretzels are too tempting so I'll say thanks for watching if you got this far cheers and I'll catch you in the next one